Hey everybody, if cabin fever is hitting you and you're looking to get out of the house, what I have beside me is a great affordable way to hit the campsite. So in this video, we're gonna look at all of the features on this Keystone hideout. We'll talk about what truck you should buy to tow it. And then of course, we'll talk about the price. And I think you'll be surprised at just how affordable this unit is. Thank you to Camping in Style in Brooklyn, Ontario for providing today's review unit. The trailer we're looking at here is the Hideout by Keystone and specifically this is the 186 LHS model. Now this LHS model is actually new to the hideout lineup and it's all about this slide out over here. Keystone claims that in this segment of trailer, just this little single axle segment, this is the largest slide out that you're going to get. Now if we're talking about weight and what you're going to need to tow this thing, well let's take a look straight up at the brochure. So you can see right there the 186 LHS comes in with a dry weight of 4,185 pounds and a length of 22 feet 10 inches. Now, coming in with the weight under 5,000 pounds means that this trailer is absolutely mid-sized truck towable. A Chevy Colorado, Ford Ranger, Toyota Tacoma, all of those trucks will tow this trailer fairly confidently. Of course, you could bump up to a half ton. It will be overkill, but it will probably feel more confident than a mid-sizer would. And the other thing with a trailer of a weight like this is there's quite a few full-size SUVs that could also tow this trailer confidently and comfortably. Before I get to more features, I want to talk to you about the price because it's so important on this unit. Now, this hideout carries an MSRP of $25,400 US, which for a trailer of this size feels extremely affordable. But of course there is a reason for it, and that reason is mostly build quality. And on the exterior, I haven't found too many examples, but on the interior, I'll show you what I mean, where it kind of comes across feeling a little bit cheap. Now let me show you the features, and as you're watching, keep in mind, this is really a unit geared towards families, geared towards having little kids and spending the least amount of money possible to get out of the house or apartment and get out there into a campsite. And the thing you need with kids is storage. So this is a big pass-through no storage, great for long items, pool noodles, whatever sports equipment you're bringing. You guys know kids come with a lot of equipment. Right up front of the trailer, of course, you're gonna have your propane and also spot to put your battery. Now you can actually have two batteries in here if you want some extra power. Now come around the side, let me show you some more features on this unit. So right up front, this is something that's becoming a lot more common. That's a hookup for a solar power panel. Of course, you hook it up, it's already pre-wired, it's gonna trickle charge your battery. It's a really handy feature not to have to worry about getting all the wiring done if you want solar. Now, let's keep moving down the side. You do have a powered awning on this unit. Once again, huge for hanging out in the campsite. And right up there, guys, speakers. If you're hanging out outside, your kids are playing, you want your tunes blasting, and that's exactly what Keystone was thinking about when they put those up there. And while you're hanging out in front of your unit, you can also plug things in with this handy exterior plug. Taking a look at these windows, really darkly tinted windows, that's gonna help make sure that people can't see into your trailer, also cut down on some of that sun glare. Now moving down the side, we of course have the back of the fridge and the heater right there, the vents for your heater. And down below, we get to the back, you have your stabilizer jacks. Now these are just a manual set of stabilizer jacks. And one thing that's important to note, these are actually an option. If you don't order these, you're actually not gonna get stabilizer jacks. So you probably wanna check that option box. That is an important one. Moving around the back now, right here, you have your hookup for cable television. And of course, you should be thinking about families. And in that vein, this is the sort of trailer you're not gonna be dry camping in. This is the kind of trailer you're gonna go to a park, you're gonna go to a state or federal or provincial park and have all of these hookups because uh, you have your kids you're not going to go out there and rough it right and that's what it's designed for round back you do get full-size spare tire there always handy to have now we're going to get on to all of our actual house hookups so right down here you have your power hookup that's actually on its own cable right there and it pulls out feed it back in 
Down below here, you have your hookups for the black tank and the gray water tank. Now, when your slide out's out, it's a bit annoying to get down underneath, but it's really not bad. Everything is exposed really nicely, so uh, it's not too hard to get down and empty out your tanks. Of course, when you're leaving the park too, the slide out would be in, and that makes it really easy to get to. Now, right up here in front of the slide is the one other connection you need to be concerned about. You, of course, have your city water and your fresh water to pump in to your tank and make sure you're rolling down the road with some water. Now guys, that's just about everything on the exterior of this trailer. I can't wait to show you inside. Now let's go inside and first let me show you these steps. Now these are becoming more common in the industry. First of all, you just turn that little handle and they flip out. Now the reason these are so smart is everything to do with these feet down here. They sit right down on the ground entirely solid. If you're familiar with sort of the common step that's been on trailers and RVs forever, it's this little flip down step that's not supported by anything. It, those have always felt weak, weak for years. This thing feels totally solid. And for someone big like me, I appreciate a solid step. Now let's go take a look inside. So on first blush climbing in this trailer, I mean, the materials all look really nice. I love this sort of full wood finish right up here in the front. Uh, to, the, to the naked eye, it looks really luxury. But when you start digging deeper, you find some places where they've cut corners. And, and that makes sense. I mean, this is an affordable trailer. For example, flip up your queen size bed here in the nose. And that's just straight up exposed particle board. No carpet, nothing over that. It would have been easy to put that there, but that's gonna make this, this unit more expensive and that's not what Keystone was going for. So you have to be aware of those trade-offs, of course. Now, let me just show you around the whole thing. So like I mentioned, you do have full-size queen bed up here in the nose, and this unit's really about sleeping a lot of people and your families. So back here, we have this small dinette. And I mean, realistically, this is gonna sleep one adult semi-comfortably. Uh, a kid or a teenager definitely is gonna be much happier back here. This table actually comes down like this, creates a nice big flat bed. Now the second bed is right up here. It's this flip out couch. Now, like I mentioned right off the top, this couch actually feels pretty nice. It's fairly comfortable, has the nice accent stitching, but then you go to flip it out and it just isn't that easy to flip. Oh, oh, I, oh, I got, oh, that was actually the easiest it's been yet, but it's not quite sitting flat for me. And then the real weird thing is it's, it's actually kind of loose here. Like the whole thing just lifts right up. Once again, guys, I just can't help but feel it comes across feeling a little bit cheap. Now for an adult though, this is almost enough bed. I'm a diagonal, sure. But I could sleep here. But keep in mind, once again, this is really designed for kids and getting your family out there. And that's what this bed is all about. Now storage, like I mentioned off the top, is a huge thing with families too. And look at all of that storage back here behind the couch. That is quite a deep storage bin. So it's nice to have all of that open storage, especially considering there isn't a lot of closed storage in this unit. Now down here underneath this futon, I'll try to fold it back up quickly. Oh, not bad actually that time either. Underneath, you do have these drawers for storage. Not too bad, you get three of them. Now besides these two drawers, you also have under seat storage here in this dinette. So peel the cushions off, that opens up, and that's an absolutely massive storage. You could fit a lot of kids' pool toys down in there for sure. But maybe the most clever storage in the whole unit is right behind me, guys. This entire back wall here has been designated for storage. Now here you actually have a bar for hanging your clothes, a little wardrobe, but over here, they don't say this, but this really strikes me as a pantry. This is a great place for dry food storage. You have four shelves going all the way up and down. And the reason this makes sense as a pantry is because of the size of the kitchen. Let's take a look now. This isn't a huge kitchen, not a ton of counter space, and not a lot of overhead storage. You do get the one right here, which is not bad size. And then underneath your stove, you get two pull-out drawers. Compared to quite a few travel trailers where you get all kinds of storage up top. You know, this one's just not really that full. I should show you that too. There is a big storage underneath the sink. So Keystone is packing in storage every place they can think to. And that's really important in a family unit. Now though, you have to look at the compromises and I mentioned it, it's counter space. You don't have a lot of space to work here. Don't plan on preparing a four course meal here. You don't have any space to actually cut anything. This is the kind of kitchen you're making
making simple, easy meals. That's also why it's crucial to have a microwave. Also, a full-size fridge. Well, not full-size, but this is a good-size fridge. It's not some little bar fridge, and it's also a really good-sized freezer. So you're not really compromising when it comes to your fridge, but you are on your overall kitchen space. If you want privacy in this Keystone, well, there's only one room you can escape to. That's the bathroom. First of all, you do get a real proper hard door on your bathroom. That's always appreciated. Now, you go in there and take a look. This is not a bad size bathroom. Um, that toilet is not quite full size, but I could fit in there comfortably. It is a foot operated toilet. Uh, the sink, again, big enough to wash off all your hands and your kids' hands. Underneath the sink, you do have a decent amount of storage. But again, here's one of the compromises you get in a more affordable unit. Look at all that exposed plumbing. This is the sort of stuff that Keystone says, you know what, let's not cover it up. People will just live with it because it's affordable and there's no storage on the wall and no medicine cabinet. Now looking at the shower, width wise, it's actually quite good. The issue with this one is the height. There's not a lot of height here. I stand at six foot two and I'm at least two to three inches too tall for this shower. However, I do have to say that it's really nice to have your own shower. There are generally public showers at most RV campgrounds, but especially these days, you're going to want to have your own private shower. And again, considering the price of this unit, that shower is plenty big to wash your kids and heck, even the dog. It's important to talk about what is optional on this trailer. And this one you see here actually doesn't have very many options on it. One of the biggest ones though is right up here in the ceiling. It's an air conditioner. Now there's no ducting in this trailer, so the AC isn't blowing everywhere. It's just coming out of here, but this is small enough that this should cool down this unit quite a bit. And guys, let me tell you, it's late May and I've just been in here shooting a video and I'm already sweating. So yes, getting an air conditioner is, is really important to uh, keeping you comfortable when you're out there camping. One of the notable omissions in here is a television. Now it seems like a basic thing, but you have to remember on an affordable trailer like this, those sorts of things don't come standard. Now there is a mounting area for a TV. The hookups are there for the TV, but there is no TV. So if you want one, you have to buy it yourself or order it as an option. That's where a trailer like this Keystone can really become affordable. If you get it with zero options, you're gonna save quite a bit of money. These days, more than ever, it's important to be able to get away with your family in your own private space. And what Keystone is offering here is an affordable way to do that. You don't need to buy some big, expensive, heavy-duty truck, and you don't have to shell out a ton of money to park this hideout in your driveway. Guys, that's it for this video. Make sure you go below, leave a comment, let me know what you think of the hideout, and just of this trailer review in general. Tell me what you want to see from future trailer reviews, and while you're down there, hit like, hit subscribe, and then come right back to the channel channel for the latest news views and real world Keystone Hideout trailer reviews. See ya.